What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Steven Inks. We are looking at a pen today that I got an inkling to buy, yep, pun intended, uh, after checking out the Caveco Brass Sport. Um, I've long thought that this uh, pen was a ripoff of the Caveco Brass Sport, but having seen it and the size factor, well today we're going to be looking at the um, Delike Moonman Majon, whatever you want to call it, brass pen. This one right here. And it is kind of like that pen, but it's a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. Um, I think this might be an interesting pen to look at, so we're going to draw with it, we're going to play around with it, and we're going to give uh, our best thoughts. What's it like? Um, check this out. All right, so the pen arrived like this, and it's very interesting that it arrived this way because there's a little ribbon down there in the box, and they could have easily slucked stuck the pen inside, but they didn't, and just let it rattle around like that. I mean, it's not going to get damaged. It's a big, thick, sturdy, chunky pen, so um, whatever, but it just seems kind of funny that they did it that way. So um, here we go. We're pulling it out, and um, this is what you get. It's already got a little bit of a finish to it. You could see there's some kind of scuffing and some sort of discoloration here. Um, I think it's supposed to look kind of rustic, so that doesn't really bother me at all. It's definitely real um, brass. I can feel it, the weight of it, um, the smell of it, a little bit of a metallic uh, scent to your fingers. If you're familiar with brass pens, you know even more expensive ones. You're gonna get that, see how it feels. Now, I, I wanted to show this off because I wanted to show the difference I really thought this would be the same size. This is the size I was kind of expecting when I got my Caveco Lilliput, but look at that. Not only are we looking at, you know, um, a shorter, a longer, excuse me, um, overall pen size, but then the width of the thing as well. If we're gonna look, see if we can get that, yeah. So we're looking at a huge difference in the overall, like the diameter of the pen, it's significant. And you can tell, um, of course the build quality on this one is better, but you could buy five of these for the cost of one of these, uh, maybe four, I don't know, but a lot. So keeping that in mind. All right, opening the pen up. It opens pretty quickly, you can hear that metal noise. I'm going to notice also that the, that the threads here are a lot more comfortable than on the Caveco. These Caveco threads, for some reason, maybe it's just the quality of the machining kind of working against it. They're, they're sharp to me. I feel like I'm going to cut my fingers on them. Anyway, that's enough of that pen for now. Um, this is meant to post, but it's not terrible by itself, so uh, the longer pen body, I think that works for me a little bit better. You get a little bit of a heavier weightiness to this. If you don't really like heavy pens, this might not be for you, but uh, I think it's for me. I, I like heavier pens. I like sturdy feeling pens. Um, this is a fine nib. Just show off the detailing. I do like the Delike. Um, detailing on the nib. It's fancy, but not being overly fancy. Um, interestingly enough, and I don't remember what the other one is like, but this looks like the feed to my, um, to my Muji pen. I want to bring that out real quick. So the feeds look almost, oh, there we go. They look almost identical. That's interesting. All right, and I, I did, while I was at it, go and grab the um, the other Delike pen that I have. And they are interesting. They're different. This one looks more like the Muji pen. This one looks more like the, um, the Twisby Eco kind of a feed. I do, I like this pen, I do. Um, 
but I'm wondering if the change in the the nib styling for this one is going to affect how the pen performs. So that'll be fun to look at. Um, we've got a what I'm guessing is a standard international cartridge um, converter. Excuse me, always do that. Um, it looks a little bit on the flimsy side, I'm not going to lie, but if we're talking standard international converter, then, um, you know, we could, we could easily, uh, switch that out for something else. Um, and as a matter of fact, I can check that because I know that the Muji pen that I just brought out has a standard international converter in it. Um, and this is a Schmidt converter didn't come with the pen. This was an addition. Um, let's just see if I'm right about that. Actually, looking at this, it's mm, it's possible, but it does seem a little bit unlikely. Let's just... Uh, I'm going to say no. I think that the Delight is its own converter. That's a shame, but... Um, I don't know. This doesn't. This doesn't look terrible. If it holds ink, that's fine. It fits really snugly, and that's important. Got the little spring there to break up the um, uh, the uh, the tension of the um, of the liquid inside the ink, so it keeps it from uh, getting stuck on the top of the converter. Very useful. I don't think there's anything else to talk about with this pen. It does seem. Like, well, let's look and see if we can take the nib out. Um, it does seem like a, oh yeah, it's got a little screw on nib unit. Um, now, okay, now I'm curious because I do have another Delike pen and it does have a different nib. This is a fine and the Delike pen is what's known, they call it a, they call it a bent nib. And I know that it's a screw um, mount as well, so now I just want to know if this one is the same as this one. No, definitely not. This has got a, a narrower diameter. So they are not exchangeable pens um, as far as the nib unit. Good to know. Um, Again, this is a great pen as well. Uh, this is a, a remodeled, oh, excuse me, a remodeled version of this design, which has been around for a bit longer. We are going to put that together and then we are going to use this pen to draw some lines. Looking forward to it. For what? ink would work. I mean, we've got this kind of rusty color here, and I suppose um, brown would be a good choice, but I'm going to go a little bit off the books. I don't want to be one-to-one -one with my colors, so this is um, Pluto and Beyond. It's from Colorverse. It's their... Uh, I can't remember the name. It's a it's a pack that I bought from uh, the Goulet Pen Company, so it's a really cool um, set of four inks with sort of a space theme, which is something that Colorverse tends to do. I like Colorverse. It's probably my second favorite. It's either my first or second favorite ink company between Colorverse and Noodlers. So um, cool company. Check them out, and we're gonna see what we can get into this pen. This is a converter fill, so we're just going to dip the pen right into the top there, push down the plunger, and pull up. Fills right away. Good sign. I like to do a second fill because that usually pushes a few more air bubbles out. Then we get a little bit more ink. And as you can see, that is the case. If I did a third one, we can see sometimes the third one doesn't actually do very much. But in this case, it looks like we got a little bit more. And we are looking good. And we're looking ready to do some test lines. 
Okay, bringing it in, we've got this pen ready to make some lines. Um, let's start with some, okay. I'm seeing some interesting stuff here. And then, um, these lines are very workable. It's the nice little medium. I say medium because the lines aren't super thin, but they're thin enough that I can make them, I can make a relatively detailed drawing without feeling overwhelmed. Sometimes those super extra fines like you get on the Pilot Kakuno or um, it's another super fine, the, the uh, Platinum Preppy extra fine um, or the other nibs that they have that are extra fine. You, you can feel overwhelmed with having to use all those super thin lines to make meaning, but I can get a nice thick line for my outlines for heavier areas and um, if my style is a little more cartoonish and not as detailed, that would be um, a lot of great stuff that you can do. So let me show you those lines a little bit up closer. Yeah, those look like fountain pen lines. It's a nice, healthy fountain pen style drawing that you can get from that. So let's do some shapes here. Yeah, this is one of those great, um, just like general use fountain pens. See it out in the wild is not an expensive pen, so you're not gonna find yourself super sad if something happens to it. And also, it seems to work really well. So I think those things combined make this a recommend. Um, I, I will be drawing with it for a little while, so if it if the flow gets inconsistent or if there's something else to add to this information, obviously I will add it. But right now I'm seeing just overall a solid good pen. Um, the only question, if this is something that you're interested in, the only question is the comfort. And right now it's feeling comfortable to me. So if you, if you trust me, then um, you could say, yeah, this is a, this is a good one. Um, I'm gonna do that thing last video I made. I said that I didn't um, do the the uh, shapes in the same plane, but of course, if I were to do that, then that makes me change the perspective mostly on the square, which means that it would be like this instead of like that. Um, and then they sort of line up vertically, kind of. Eh, this might not be worth it, but. Um, just wanted to try something new. And as you can see, you can make a lot of nice little quick lines and you can make a nice long straight line. There's a lot of flexibility to this pen. Um, and, uh, oh, I forgot to do uh, reverse writing over here. Let me give that a try. Ooh, that's delightful. It's delightful. Um, it's very smooth. That's good to know. Let's um, take a little closer look at these reverse writing lines. You've got a lot of thinness there. Not as even a flow as the forward writing, but that's usually the case. So I'm not sure that I would count that against this pen, but um, I do think that if you're needing to get in there with a really fine detail, I'd say for my drawings, I would there'd be about maybe 10% of the time that I'm looking at maybe getting a little bit finer than the nib will let me get and a reverse writing would be the right move. Um, but it's, it's pretty rare. I think you want to kind of have your lines and trust them and um, feel good about what you're doing. And that's all that really matters. Does it feel nice to draw with this pen? Well then, go for it. I think people could really um, get a sense that when you're drawing and if, you, if you're doing something that you enjoy, I think people latch on to that. I hope that's why people have enjoyed um, this channel because I do try to just draw things that I think are fun um, and not worry too much about if they're good, but I of course try my best to make them um, as good as I can make them. 
I can't be a better artist than I myself am. Uh, I always try to be, but I know that's ridiculous. So if you're being ridiculous with yourself, just remember that's okay, but you should probably acknowledge it as I acknowledge that I'm a ridiculous person. Um, here we go. Well, there we go. We're just going to finish that up right there. I got a little bit of sloppy here towards the end here, but uh, as you can see, I'm not having any trouble using this in any way. Um, it's comfortable to hold. It's a little bit of a lip right there, but I mean, it's a metal pen. What are you going to expect there? It, it's going to be a little bit of a lip, but it doesn't feel super uncomfortable. It's like, it seems like they've done something. And I'm curious if they, you know, there's some sort of smoothing that happened after they cut this just to make it more comfortable. It's true of these threads up here. They're not sharp. Um, it's true of the, um, the threads down here, less sharp, a little more sharp up here, down here than here. I'm not sure why that is, but that's just kind of my impression, my feeling. Um, but yeah, well, actually these aren't, I just realized that these aren't threads. There's nothing that screws in here. So this is just decorative. Kind of weird, but also not uncomfortable. So cool, good to note. Uh, we are going to go with some art advice now. This is actually nice to write with too. Art advice. Uh, and I'm gonna be a little bit philosophical, philosophical with this one. Um, and just thinking about, people talk about subject matter and things they're gonna write. Uh, I think your own art advice is, I'm mean, sorry, your own life is the perfect inspiration for the art you should be making. If you think about it, um, sometimes I wonder, because I've lived a fairly normal life, I don't have a lot of traumatic things. I have things I'm dealing with. I've had my own share of tragedies and victories and all of those things. When it comes down to it, when I'm creating art from my own experience, it's the most honest and true. And if you remember, that you can create the most honest and true art for your perspective and that people may, most likely will, if there's people like you out there in the world, and fairly likely there's a lot of people out there, uh, people will relate to something that's honest and true. So um, what is going on in your life that needs to have art made about it? Um, anything, even mundane and boring things, it's really just about um, figuring out how to make your art style reflect the life that you're living or the life that you want to be living because then you never have to worry about losing touch with your audience because your audience is you and people just like you. So uh, let's make some art. So uh, camels are funny, right? They got funny little squishy faces and uh, big nostrils. And um, I, in my life, have never seen a camel wearing a fancy dress and a little necklace. So that's what I decided to draw this time. All that stuff I said about art being true, it can just be the truly the things that you want to see. So I decided to make this because I've never seen it before. Um, I hope you like it. I will say that I like uh, using this pen to draw with. I had to make some creative decisions because it does make thicker lines than some of the pens that I'm used to working with. So, um, I don't know. I guess uh, doing this um, the way that I did it, it, it just turned out that uh, it was a little more uh, thicker lines than what I had before. But I don't know if if that's very noticeable to people who are used to the kind of stuff that I draw. A little bit silly, a little bit detailed, um, a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing with this and I enjoyed making the, um, 
the drawing that I ended up making. So um, I hope that you like it. That's all I got to say. Okay, so uh, final thoughts on this pen. Um, yeah, I I think it's not a very subtle pen. The lines that it makes are kind of thick, kind of wide, kind of wet, uh, but you can do a lot with it, and I'm happy with the drawing that I did. So I think this one's a winner, and I'd actually recommend it over the Caveco Brass Sport uh, if you have medium to large size hands. I guess small-handed people, uh, the Caveco Brass Sport would hit really well for you. Uh, for me, the size difference is significant enough, if you look at these two together, um, that I think that this one is more of a winner for me. And good news, because it's a lot cheaper. So you can check out the links to that in the video description. Um, also, please like and subscribe if you find this content interesting to you. Help me grow this channel. You can go on to my website, stepheninks.com, and download a free PDF of my book, What Kind of Pen Is That?, um, I appreciate you all. Thank you for watching my video and I'll catch you in the next one.